Thank you. Hey, everybody. This is Jeremy Siskin. I'm the author of too many books. Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book 1. Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book 2. Playing solo jazz piano. All the hits are here, folks. But we're not here to talk about me. Um, I'm here to introduce you to my good friend, Matthew Fries. Um, hi, hey, Matt. Hey. Um, Matt just has a really beautiful new trio album called Lost Time with Johnny Bear and Keith Hall. Um, I want, I'm going to ask you about that album in a sec, but let's go through okay. some other bullet points of your biography. Okay. Um, okay so you have so, to see what you found. <laughs> okay. I did my research. You are, okay. <laughs> are a winner of the Great American Jazz Piano Competition. True or false? A long time ago, but it's true. A long yes. time ago. But you've only gotten better since then, right? <laughs> Yeah, okay, thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, Longtime collaborator with Curtis Steigers. Mm -hmm. um, it said in your bio, over 20 years of uh, mm -hmm. music directing, arranging, performing yeah. with, with Curtis, recording with him. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, well, we have a really special connection, which is that uh, the office that you're sitting in in California, yes, in Michigan, used to be, your used to be office. my office. Yes. Um, you took over for me uh, when I left my job at Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo, and you're now a tenure track full time. Uh, you're an assistant professor, technically? Yes, technically, at, yes. At Western Michigan, yep. and just for anybody out there who's looking to study jazz, that is a great and underrated program, and Matthew is a oh, thanks. fantastic teacher and mentor, so mm -hmm. highly recommend yeah. it. I just stole um, all the stuff that you left behind in the studio, and I've been yeah, using it. Perfect. That <laughs> I didn't leave much, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, do you want to say just a few few words about your new album? Because it's, so, yeah. it's so beautiful. I hope people listen. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I did. Um, it's a record I recorded... You know, it's, I think a lot of us as musicians, you know, when we, when we got into the pandemic and the lockdown, it's like, what are we going to do? And I started writing music um, and ended up with this collection of songs um, and recorded it last summer with, um, as you mentioned, John A. Bear and Keith Hall, two amazing musicians. And they did such a beautiful job of, of bringing um, the music to life and just really making it special. Um, you know, it's, one of the tunes and the title track on the on the record is something that I, I it's uh, I wrote it for my mother. My mom, she passed away during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, both she and her husband passed away within about two months of each other. Wow. Um, he passed away first and she was suffering from uh, pretty severe dementia. Uh -huh. um, so she was in a home. Um, and so it was kind of th this unfortunate situation where in order to keep her safe, you know, she was in a facility um, and, you know, there was all these COVID protocols. You weren't allowed to come to see, you weren't allowed to visit, you weren't allowed. And so their, you know, their solution, which is a great solution, is like, hey, here's an iPad. We'll do FaceTime. You can talk. Well, you know, she had dementia. She had no idea what was going on. She had no idea how to use an iPad. Mm -hmm. There's just this face looking at her who she didn't recognize. Yeah. Um, and, you know, these really weird one one sided conversations where I'm just kind of like, hey, da, 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 trying to entertain her long enough to keep her attention on the screen for 15 minutes. Um, you know, somebody in that state, it's like you just want to go and hold their hand and you want to, you know, have some physical contact. And that was impossible. Yeah. You know, basically, the last f four to six months of her life, um, she was kind of isolated and um, and I didn't get to really connect with her, you know. Um, and so I wrote that, you know, when she did pass away, in a way it was kind of like, okay, she was 80 years old. She had dementia. She, she was not my, the, the person that was my mother anymore. So it was yeah. a little bit of a relief, but also, you know, it's a parent and it's a big deal. So I wrote, I wrote this, I wrote a piece for her uh, that became the title track. And then I, you know, later as I started to talk about this record, I realized how much that experience kind of really defined so much of my experience during the pandemic mm. um, and how much it it kind of tinted so many of the other pieces I was writing about other subjects around the, the pandemic. I, you know, I wrote a piece trying to capture the feeling of insomnia. I wrote another one mm -hmm. called The Fog, which was kind of like dedicated, but kind of to brain fog, but also a little more lightly to like, if you've ever tried to wear glasses and a mask at the same time, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a disaster. Um, and so, you know, it was kind of a combination of some lighthearted themes and some serious themes, but they all kind of come together through this lens of, um, you know, missing out on missing on the relationship with my mom. And then also then like, well, what are some other things that we missed out on in life and mm -hmm. and other ways that time got lost? You know, just like just the simple fact of what day is today? I haven't you know, I'm still wearing pajamas on the bottom half of my mm -hmm. body because I'm on a Zoom call. <laughs> You know, I'll relate to that. <laughs> we've all done it. We've all done it. 
Um, and so, um, yeah, so it's, it, it kind of has a theme to it that way that, that kind of, you know, it wasn't intended as a theme when I wrote the music and when I created the, mu created the album, but it's definitely something that's there and it's, de and, it, and I've, I've come to really recognize it in a lot of the pieces and a lot of the performance. Yeah. And I kind of enjoyed, you know, so I think that the, you've always been such a great composer and arranger for that trio space. You have this group Tri-Fi that I've gotten to watch a number of times, and it's always so kind of creative and orchestral. And I enjoyed the music, but then I felt like artistically, as I looked at the, the like, list of titles, I was like, oh, this is going to kind of be a bummer. This is going to be really serious. But it, it really wasn't at all. You, mm -hmm. you took some of these titles that seemed that they were going to be very deep and dark and serious, and you wrote kind of other interesting takes that were, mm -hmm. you know, still authentic, but felt like they brought out a different side of things. And I, yeah. I really appreciated that. But yeah, I mean, it can't be just all gl gloom and doom, right? <laughs> you haven't heard my last album. <laughs> it's kind of the vibe. <laughs> but you know, it's like you know, when we're going through these kind of things, there are you know, you're you know, you're 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 um, you're you know, you're sad and you're 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 trying to get over it. But there's also these kind of lighthearted memories and lighthearted perspective on the situation too, um, and that's kind of how we that's kind of how we heal. Um, and so I think this this record kind of captures you know all those different facets of it so yeah well, i I've, I've been really enjoying it i listened to thank it uh, again as i was jogging this morning so so thank you okay. plus um, i put it on vinyl which is like really makes it special for me i'm like a oh, little bit cool. of a vinyl freak so oh man that's awesome yeah well i've invited you here to show me an exercise not yes. just to shamelessly well i've i've been shamelessly promoting your album you're doing with with some amount of shame with appropriate shame uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what exercise are you gonna show me well um i thought i would there's this you know, we have kind of, I think we all probably have our pet exercises that we just kind of keep coming back to. Yeah. Um, and I have one that, that it's kind of a, um, I stole it from, I'm just going to flat out say I stole it from Rafael Josefi, the, the Hungarian pianist. He has a, a, a really challenging book of, of uh, piano exercises. I think it's called like for the advanced piano Start student. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. And it's I all like it's I mean, a little I would, secret code among among a certain group of yeah. Players. It's all they those all things like where you've got like exercises. where you've got these internal trills and you're trying to change chords and total finger buster exercises, right? Um, but there was one in there that was intended as a black key exercise, um, and it's a pentatonic exercise for five fingers, um, where he basically just um, you know starting on F sharp. One, three, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five. It's like all five fingers, right? Mm -hmm. um, so he, what he did was, and then you skip a finger, and now you're in first inversion. Oh, sorry. And then you skip a finger, and you're in first inversion. Right, so you're skipping your second finger on the way down. You're going five, four, three, and then one. Yeah, sometimes I do five, four, three, and then one. Sometimes I do five, four, two, and one. It depends. I, see. I skip okay. one of these two fingers, depending how it's comfortable. So, so um, let me see, uh, just so that people can can kind yep. of picture this. So this is. And then I'm skipping two. Now I'm thumb. playing uh -huh. like G flat six in second inversion. Exactly That's right. Yes. And then I could see. Yeah, this would make sense. Two to one. Yeah. Third finger there. I'd probably skip three mm -hmm. again there. Now it's like I'm playing E flat minor seven, right? Yep. And uh huh. Back and now you're back to G position. flat six. Okay. And now you can take it back down. Skip a finger. I can see how this could prepare you to play the Chopin Black Key Etude. The, sure. <laughs> this is all it takes, right? That's all you need to do. Some beautiful, yeah, some beautiful sweeping. So there's some fun things about this one that um, that make it. <clears throat> the one is that basically you have one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it breaks it into sevens, right? Mm -hmm. So that means the beat keeps shifting. Mm. So if you if you put it in tempo.
and now you've flipped it and now you're ready to come and it, and it automatically comes right back down the octave. Oh, cool. Um, Can I try that? Yep. One, two, three, uh... Am I doing it right? Got it, exactly right. Okay. Very good, Jeremy. <laughs> oh no. You don't handle compliments very well you're, while you're playing. <laughs> no, I was so pleased. I freaked out. <laughs> so, okay, okay, so that's the way, that's the way Yosefi presented it. And, you know, two hands and, blah, 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 of course, you're supposed to rip up and down the keys as you do, you know. Um, so, okay. so the first thing I did with this was I, I, I just transposed it. Mm -hmm. Right? So now you take the same exercise. <laughs> That becomes a white key exercise. I was playing it in F. Sorry about this, the mistakes there. Um, and then I took it and I used it on different chord types. So maybe instead of a major pentatonic, you would do minor. And do you still maintain that one, two, three, four, five fingering, or do the you exact same fingering? Okay, so it's you always one, two, three, like four, five. Putting right? your thumb on the A flat. Um, right. It's so so. It's like okay. It's not the same. It's not the same rules as when you're playing a scale where you're like, don't put your okay. thumb on the black keys, kids. Um, but in this case, you, we're really trying to, it, it kind of forces you to find all these different intervals and, and stretches and stuff. Yeah, it's kind of, let, let me try that in yeah, sure. with the F minor 6. For some reason, yeah. it's relatively easy going up and then going down. I'm really tripping up. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it, it can be challenging. And, you know, and then you can get, you know, I would take it and do um, some, like, even more bizarre chords. Like, take okay. maybe, so you got a major, uh, a, a diminished major seven. Yes. Like an e, e triad almost with Fs on either side. Yes. And so now you end up with this crazy stretch in the middle of your yeah, in, in you fingers, sure do. right? So what I like about this is like, yes, when you're doing the pentatonic one, it's, you can play the whole chord at one time, right? Mm -hmm. And the habit is, I think, that you end up freezing your hand in position and trying to go da 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 and then you freeze your hand in position. When you do these other ones that are, have these stretches, like, I don't know about your hand, but no, I can't awful. play that with I can't play that with one hand. Ugh. Okay, you got more flexibility than I so do. So then, how do you think about going from that B to that E with your third to your fourth? Do you think about swiveling? Do you think I think about... of, I think of the shifting, like it, you know. I know um, I know we've both done some studying with Fred Hirsch, and he's very much on like get your hands on the rails and sliding across. Mm. Um, when I started doing this exercise, I had I was having problem with tendonitis. I basically had this when I was in college. You know, I was into Oscar Peterson, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to play some Oscar Peterson. Man. And I realized I was playing like this, you know, with the hand, like, at this crazy angle, and just stuff just blew up in here. And basically relearned how to play very slowly with, you know, wrists out straight. And a big part of that was trying to get comfortable with the shifts without all the twisting and, and stuff. Mm. Um, and this exercise really helped me with that, um, that I'm really thinking about articulating on each note and trying to relax you know, when I play, when I go from the, the B to the, to the E, yeah, there's, I have to do a little bit you of a shift. have to jump a little bit. You're there's not, a little you're bit of a jump in there. Do a finger legato from one to the next. Yes. You know, and, and I'm, so I'm trying not to exaggerate the stretch and the twist and really just make the, the shift happen as quickly and smoothly as possible and really trying to make it be about relaxing on each note. Um, and it's and it's really is the relationship. I'm moving from here to here. Okay, reset. I'm moving from here to here. Okay, reset. Mm -hmm. Moving from here to here, to try to get some tension out of your hands. That's interesting. Um, I, because, I love this because I I do a lot of thinking about how pianists move up and down the piano. Mm-hmm. Because one of the things that I've noticed in some of my less advanced students, and even in some of my more advanced students, is some of them have a hard time getting into multiple hand positions as yes. they're improvising. Mm -hmm. And so I generally 
teach kind of two ways of getting up and down the piano. The first is like you cross your thumb under, right? Yes. Just like you're playing a scale, yes. yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And it's amazing the number of pianists who don't do that. <laughs> um, but then the other is like, I think of it as expand, contract. Like, you know, you're kind of doing this to go up the piano. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this doesn't seem like it's exactly either, but maybe it is a little bit of, I think it, you kind of are expanding to the hand position and then contracting yeah. a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and I think, I think the, you know, the, the, the extra that this, or at least the way I'm thinking about it, yeah. is that expanding and contracting, you have to be relaxed to do that, mm-hmm. right? Tell me more. Um, well, that, you know, like if I, if I try to play this one and like that with that stretch, all of a sudden I get all this tension. Well, now I'm not, I can't get reset to play the next inversion because that's a different stretch. And it really forces you to, um, th- if you're going to play this with any speed whatsoever, you've got to be really relaxed and it has to be one note at a time rather than a hand position and then moving and then moving. Oh, right? I see. So right. you're thinking it of you're thinking of it as like you're not even you don't even have time to get into a hand position. You're right. kind of moving. It's, it's an articulation nose. of a finger, and it's and it's like oh, trying to. So, so the hand's kind of in constant motion almost because yeah. you're forcing it to be, mm-hmm. which is that's I, really cool. Yeah, and then you can push the metronome up and up and up, right? And you're gonna hit a spot when you're practicing this where your hand goes, Ugh! and you <laughs> and you freeze right. up, and you're like, okay, that's the threshold, and I da- and I back it back down. Uh-huh. And you come, you know, and you keep working, and then you find that that threshold moves up and up as, as you get better at it. Oh, you know, when you're starting out, it's like the threshold's really low that you're just like immediately like, ah. Yeah. yeah. And do, do you feel like this trans? So, so you know, you're talking about this pianistically. Do you feel like this translates into your improvising? In, um, you know, how, how do you think it affects that? Well, I think it, it it gives you a couple of different ways. It gives you access to unexpected things because you know, like you said. We're practicing putting our thumb on an A flat when right. you know, that's not really something that we would normally do in legitimate fingering. Yeah. Um, but when you're improvising, it's kind of like whatever finger gets the job done, right? Mm. Um, it, um, and I think, you know, yeah, it's, it's more like an access to the instrument sort of a thing. Mm. Um, but there's also an awareness to kind of like some of these, um, some of these sounds. Like, okay, that last one I was doing, you know, diminished major seven. That's a beautiful... Right. You know, that's a beautiful arpeggio to be able to run up the keys, Mm -hmm. you know, in whatever inversion, whoops, Um, whatever inversion you do it in, Mm. um, you know, you kind of have access and and sounds um, and uh, and a freedom, I think. Yeah, cool. This also seems like a great candidate to practice in mirror. Like, wow. Okay. The, you and well, your mirror exercises, Jeremy. Well, yeah. But this one, because <laughs> it is so much about the motion and the fingering, mm-hmm. like, cause if you're practicing it going up, your two hands are doing two completely different things. But right. If you're practicing it in mirror, then actually you could kind of coordinate and make this, mm-hmm. these like symmetrical motions. I think it would actually kind of be cool. So I'm just thinking you know, out loud here. You know, you've, you've just ruined, you've just ruined the next three months of my life. Cause that's all <laughs> But. <laughs> of C it's actually kind of you would end up with C on both sides unless I'm making a mistake you'd end up with oh like you're that. right yeah that's actually like it feels so nice it, yeah there's kind of it's, this, it's, this is uh, you know this symmetry. is this is one that I do pretty much every day there's like a, there's, really? a, there's wow. a couple of exercises that I I kind of just like they are part of my warm-up routine um, and I find that this just really kind of gets my hands relaxed in a, um, and, you know, really focusing on the tone and the consistency is every finger sounding the same way but when you're doing it slow and then you gradually bring the tempo up and then it becomes about something else. Right. Um, so it's a nice, it's a nice one for that, I think. Cool. I love it. I am looking forward to playing around with this. Sure. Um, I'm really grateful, Matthew. Sure. Um, great. So. Everybody out there, check out Lost Time by Matthew Fries. You can find it on Spotify. It's on all the big playlists, I hear. Yes, yes it's, um, on, it's everywhere. <laughs> and if they want to get the vinyl, is it off your site that they would do it's that? It's off my site, MatthewFries.com. I've also got a Bandcamp site if you're, if you're a Bandcamp person. And Fries is spelled like fries, like French spelled fries. spelled like French fries. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Well, it's fantastic to see you. Thanks, Jeremy. It was really yeah. fun. Yeah, I really appreciate the, all the new info. Sure, sure. All right. Take care, Matt. Thanks, thanks, thanks.